Just like the input box function has some uh, more advanced options, the message box function also has advanced options here. Whenever you add in these optional things, for example, buttons or the title, um, I hardly ever use help file and context, but you could probably Google on what those mean. Whenever you have optional arguments other than the prompt, though, you need to include something on the left side of an equal sign uh, before message box. And I'll explain what I mean by this in a few minutes with a couple examples. So we can have a prompt, we can have button codes. So this buttons here refers to these button codes down here. There's all sorts of different types of buttons that you can display. We have the default, which is OK only. We can also tailor the message box to have OK cancel. In that case, we use a 1 for the code. And there's all sorts of others. So I'm going to kind of go through a couple examples of this. Now, the buttons here can either be the text. I could write VB OK cancel. Or I could put the integer 1. Now, the button codes, similar to input box codes, can be combined. So if you wanted a, a question, but you also wanted a yes, no, then you could combine those two integers, and I could add 32 and 4 to be a yes, no message box with buttons for yes and no, but there'd be a question mark on the message box. So I just have an example here. Again, whenever you're using something other than just a simple prompt, then you need to have an equal sign to the left of message box, and you have to be assigning that. The message box function will assign an output to an integer, so you have to dim answer as an integer. This could also be any other variable that you want, but I like to use ANS a lot of times in my examples. So the message box function is going to re have a return value, and that's kind of shown down in this chart here. When we bring up this message box, the button code is 3, so if I back up one slide, 3 refers to yes, no, cancel. So there's going to be three buttons on there. There's going to be a yes button, a no button, and a cancel button. So if the user clicks yes on that message box, then this answer variable is going to be assigned the value of 6. If the user selects no, then this answer variable is going to be assigned the value of 7. And if they click cancel, then that answer variable is going to be assigned the value of 2. So let's just go through a couple examples. The typical message box that you guys have been working with is just shown here. We can message box hello. If you want to tailor this, so here are the different buttons that are possible. I could do a OK cancel. So I could click on the OK cancel. Alternatively, an OK cancel, I could just write, I could put a 1 in there. And then if I wanted a title here, I could just say uh, output. And when we go through this, it's going to give you an error because whenever you have more than just this simple prompt, the first argument, it's going to return a return value. So I need to put something out front. Even if you're not using that answer, you still have to put something out front and you have to dim that as an integer. So with the, now when we go through this, it's going to have two buttons on there because I customized this OK Cancel. We've got a title here, which is output. And then we've got our prompt. And if I look down here in the locals window, the answer, so I clicked cancel, the return value for the cancel button is a 2. If I redo this and I click OK, the return value for OK is a 1. I mentioned a few moments ago that we can either write the VB, which stands for Visual Basic OK Cancel, or we can use those button codes. For example, if I put a 2, a 2 corresponds to abort, retry, ignore. So when I run through this, that's how we can tailor the buttons, abort, retry, ignore. Now the return values of abort, retry, ignore, we can get from that table. Don't confuse the return values with the button codes. So these are the button codes, but the return values are here. So we had re, uh, abort, retry, ignore. Those are 3, 4, and 5. The reason we want to use this sometimes is we want to do different things depending upon which button the user selects. So we can add in if statements. Here's a multi-alternative to do different things depending upon what the user clicks. So now when I go through this, if they click abort, 
that's assigned answer here is assigned a value of three so we can do something just in this example we can display a message box uh, if they click ignore that is a return value of five so that's not equal to three nor four so we can message box you clicked ignore now obviously you probably wouldn't be message boxing the button that they pressed but you could be doing different things depending upon uh, what they select the last thing I want to show you is how you can combine these button codes so four is the VB yes no so we're gonna have a yes and a no button on the message box so these are the button codes 32 is for a question so if I run through a 4 here when the button code is 4 we get yes no and you notice there's no other formatting on this message box if I run through 32 by itself we get a hello and you notice there's a question mark here so that question mark is uh, for this VB question but you notice that if you have a zero with a question, then that's just the OK only. That's why we only have the OK button on that message box. But now if I add 32 plus 4, I can get 36. There's only one unique combination that of all those button codes that leads to 36. So it can only be interpreted as a question formatted message box and the uh, yes, no buttons. And when I run through this, we have a question mark and then we've got the yes and no. So this is how you can customize your message boxes.